Ibn Arabi, the 26th of July 1165 to the 16th of November 1240. Full name Abu Abd Allah Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Muhammad ibn Arabi al hatimiyat was an Andalusian Muslim scholar, mystic, poet, and philosopher whose works have grown to be very influential beyond the Muslim world. Of the over 800 works which are attributed to him, 100 survive in the original manuscript. Topic: Biography. <inaudible> <inaudible> Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Muhammad ibn backquote Arabi al Hatimiyat Abbidi al Memdi ibn Li ibn Memdi ibn Arbi Alami Alte was a Sufi mystic, poet, and philosopher born in Murcia, Spain on 17 Ramadan. The 26th of July 1165 AD. He is renowned among practitioners of Sufism by the names al Sheikh al Akbar, the Great Sheikh, Mahidin ibn Arabi, and was considered a saint. He was also known as Sheikh e Akbar Mohi ud Din ibn e Arabi throughout the Middle East. Ibn Arabi was Sunni, although his writings on the Twelve Imams were also popularly received among Shia. It is debated whether or not he ascribed to the Zahiri Madhab. After his death, Ibn Arabi's teachings quickly spread throughout the Islamic world due to the soundness of his arguments. His writings were not limited to the Muslim elites, but made their way into the lower ranks of society through the widespread reach of the Sufi orders. Arabi's work also popularly spread through the poetic languages of Persian, Turkish, and Urdu. Many popular poets were trained in the Sufi orders and were inspired by Arabi's concepts. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Family. Ibn Arabi was of mixed parentage. His father was an Arab who belonged to the prominent Arabian tribe of Tayy. His mother came from a noble Berber tribe originating from North Africa. In his writings, Al-Arabi mentions a deceased maternal uncle, Yahya ibn Yuman, who was a wealthy prince of the city of Tlemcen, but had left that position to lead a life of spirituality after encountering a Sufi mystic. His father, Ali ibn Muhammad, served in the army of Muhammad ibn Sa'id ibn Mardanish, the ruler of Mercia. When Ibn Mardanis died in 1172 AD, his father shifted his allegiance to the Almohad Sultan, Abu Yaqub Yusuf I, and again went into government service. His family then relocated from Mercia to Seville. Ibn Arabi grew up among the ruling court and received military training. As a young adult, Ibn Arabi was secretary to the governor of Seville. He had married a woman by the name Maryam who was from an influential family. Education Ibn Arabi states in his writings he received no unusual religious education as a child, but rather spent much time with friends enjoying childhood. It was in his teens when he had a vision of God, later writing that initial experience as the differentiation of the universal reality comprised by that look. He states having had several visions of Jesus, calling him his first guide to the path of God. His father noticed this change in him and mentioned it to philosopher and judge, Ibn Rushd Averroes. Averroes requested to meet with Ibn Arabi, and it was this initial meeting when Ibn Arabi perceived a big difference existing between formal knowledge of rational thinkers and the unveiling of true insights into the nature of things. He adopted Sufism and dedicated his life to the spiritual path. His spiritual mentor in Fez was Muhammad ibn Qasim al Tamimi. In the year 1200, he was in Morocco and took his final leave from his master Yusuf al Kumi, who was living in the village of Saleh at that time. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Pilgrimage to Mecca. Ibn Arabi left Spain for the first time at age 30 and arrived at Tunis. While there, he received a vision in year 1200 instructing him to journey east, arriving for the Hajj in 1202. He lived in Mecca for three years. It was in Mecca that he started writing his work Al-Futuhat Al-Makiya, al, al, al the Meccan Illuminations. <laughs> <laughs> Journeys to the north After spending time in Mecca, he traveled throughout Syria, Palestine, Iraq, and Anatolia. The year 1204 witnessed a meeting between Ibn Arabi and Sheikh Maidaddin Ishaq ibn Yusuf, Sheikh Mijd al Din Ashak bn Yesef, a native of Malatya and a man of great standing at the Seljuk court. This time Ibn Arabi was traveling north, first they visited Medina and in 1205 they entered Baghdad. This visit, besides other benefits, offered him a chance to meet the direct disciples of Sheikh Abd al Qadir Jalani. 
Ibn Arabi stayed there only for twelve days because he wanted to visit Mosul to see his friend Ali ibn Abdallah ibn Jami, a disciple of Qadib al-Ban. There he spent the month of Ramadan and composed Tanazulat al-Mazalaya, Tinzalat al-Mzlat Kitab al-Jalal wal-Jamal, Kitab al-Jalal wal the Book of Majesty and Beauty, and Kun ma la Buddha lil murid minhu. Topic. Return to South In the year 1206 he visited Jerusalem, Mecca and Egypt. It was his first time that he passed through Syria, visiting Aleppo and Damascus. Later in 1207 he returned to Mecca where he continued to study and write, spending his time with his friend Abu Shuja bin Rustam and family, including the beautiful Nizam. The next four to five years of Ibn Arabi's life were spent in these lands and he also kept traveling and holding the reading sessions of his works in his own presence. Death On 22 Rabi al Thani 638 the 8th of November 1240, at the age of 75, Ibn Arabi died in Damascus. Topic: <inaudible> Islamic law. Although Ibn Arabi stated on more than one occasion that he did not prefer any one of the schools of Islamic jurisprudence, he was responsible for copying and preserving books of the Zahirite or literalist school, to which he has been ironically and erroneously ascribed. Ibn Arabi shared Ghazali's views that Islamic law was only a temporary means to a higher goal, eschewing the heavy focus on worldly matters such as financial transactions and regulations regarding clothing. Ibn Arabi did delve into specific details at times, and was known for his view that religiously binding consensus could only serve as a source of sacred law if it was the consensus of the first generation of Muslims who had witnessed revelation directly. Al-Insan al-Kamil The doctrine of perfect man al -insan al -kamil is popularly considered an honorific title attributed to Muhammad having its origins in Islamic mysticism, although the concept's origin is controversial and disputed. Arabi may have first coined this term in referring to Adam as found in his work Fusus al hikam explained as an individual who binds himself with the divine and creation, taking an idea already common within Sufi culture. Ibn Arabi applied deep analysis and reflection on the concept of a perfect human and one's pursuit in fulfilling this goal. In developing his explanation of the perfect being, Ibn Arabi first discusses the issue of oneness through the metaphor of the mirror. In this philosophical metaphor, Ibn Arabi compares an object being reflected in countless mirrors to the relationship between God and his creatures. God's essence is seen in the existent human being, as God is the object and human beings the mirrors. Meaning two things, that since humans are mere reflections of God there can be no distinction or separation between the two and, without God the creatures would be non-existent. When an individual understands that there is no separation between human and God they begin on the path of ultimate oneness. The one who decides to walk in this oneness pursues the true reality and responds to God's longing to be known. The search within for this reality of oneness causes one to be reunited with God, as well as, improves self-consciousness. The perfect human, through this developed self-consciousness and self-realization, prompts divine self-manifestation. This causes the perfect human to be of both divine and earthly origin. Ibn Arabi metaphorically calls him an isthmus. Being an isthmus between heaven and earth, the perfect human fulfills God's desire to be known. God's presence can be realized through him by others. Ibn Arabi expressed that through self-manifestation one acquires divine knowledge, which he called the primordial spirit of Muhammad and all its perfection. Ibn Arabi details that the perfect human is of the cosmos to the divine and conveys the divine spirit to the cosmos. Ibn Arabi further explained the perfect man concept using at least 22 different descriptions and various aspects when considering the logos. He contemplated the logos, or universal man, as a mediation between the individual human and the divine essence. Ibn Arabi believed Muhammad to be the primary perfect man who exemplifies the morality of God. Ibn Arabi regarded the first entity brought into existence was the reality or essence of Muhammad al hakika al muhammadiya master of all creatures, and a primary role model for human beings to emulate. Ibn Arabi believed that God's attributes and names are manifested in this world, with the most complete and perfect display of these divine attributes and names seen in Muhammad. Ibn Arabi believed that one may see God in the mirror of Muhammad. 
He maintained that Muhammad was the best proof of God and, by knowing Muhammad, one knows God. Ibn Arabi also described Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and all other prophets and various Aliya Allah Muslim saints as perfect men, but never tires of attributing lordship, inspirational source, and highest rank to Muhammad. Ibn Arabi compares his own status as a perfect man as being but a single dimension to the comprehensive nature of Muhammad. Ibn Arabi makes extraordinary assertions regarding his own spiritual rank, but qualifying this rather audacious correlation by asserting his inherited perfection is only a single dimension of the comprehensive perfection of Muhammad. Ibn Arabi described Jesus as the spirit, and simultaneously a servant, of God. Jesus is held to be one with God, in whole coincidence of his will with God's will. Due to the spirit of God dwelling in Jesus, God spoke and acted through him. Ibn Arabi describes Jesus as a person within God's word and spirit and a manifestation of God's attributes, like a mirror. Reaction Muslim scholars have often held strong, polarized views regarding the viewpoints and character of Ibn Arabi. Many have declared Ibn Arabi to be the foremost spiritual leader and Sufi master in Muslim history. Others regarded him as a heretic or even an apostate. Very few scholars have had neutral or lukewarm reactions. The reaction of Ibn Abd as Salam, a Muslim scholar respected by both Ibn Arabi's supporters and detractors, has been of note due to disputes over whether he himself was a supporter or detractor. All parties have claimed to have transmitted Ibn Abd as Salam's comments from his student Ibn Sayyid al Nas, yet the two sides have transmitted very different accounts. Ibn Taymiyyah, al-Dahabi and Ibn Kathir all transmitted Ibn Abd as Salam's comments as a criticism, while Feruzabadi, al-Suyuti, Ahmed Muhammad al-Makhari and Yusuf and Nabani have all transmitted the comments as praise. Works <laughs> 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 Some 800 works are attributed to Ibn Arabi, although only some have been authenticated. Recent research suggests that over 100 of his works have survived in manuscript form, although most printed versions have not yet been critically edited and include many errors. The Meccan Illuminations al al his largest work in 37 volumes originally and published in four or eight volumes in modern times, discussing a wide range of topics from mystical philosophy to Sufi practices and records of his dreams, visions. It totals 560 chapters. The Ringstones of Wisdom also translated as the Bezels of Wisdom, or Fusus al-Hikam. Composed during the later period of Ibn Arabi's life, the work is sometimes considered his most important and can be characterized as a summary of his teachings and mystical beliefs. It deals with the role played by various prophets in divine revelation. The attribution of this work Fusus al to Ibn Arabi is debated and in at least one source is described as a forgery and false attribution to him reasoning that there are 74 books in total attributed to Sheikh Ibn Arabi of which 56 have been mentioned in al futuhat al makia and the rest mentioned in the other books cited therein. However many other scholars accept the work as genuine. The Diwan, his collection of poetry spanning five volumes, mostly unedited. The printed versions available are based on only one volume of the original work. The Holy Spirit in the Counseling of the Soul Ra'al Quds, a treatise on the soul which includes a summary of his experience from different spiritual masters in the Maghrib, part of this has been translated as Sufis of Andalusia, reminiscences and spiritual anecdotes about many interesting people whom he met in Al-Andalus. Contemplation of the Holy Mysteries Mashahid al-Asrar, probably his first major work, consisting of fourteen visions and dialogues with God. Divine Sayings Mishkat al-Anwar, an important collection made by Ibn Arabi of 101 Hadith Qudsi. The Book of Annihilation in Contemplation K. al-Fana Fil Mushahada, a short treatise on the meaning of mystical annihilation Fana. Devotional Prayers Orad, a widely read collection of 14 prayers for each day and night of the week. Journey to the Lord of Power Rizalat al-Anwar, a detailed technical manual and roadmap for the journey without distance. The Book of God's Days Am al a work on the nature of time and the different kinds of days experienced by Gnostics. The Fabulous Griffin of the West Unka Mugrib, a book on the meaning of sainthood and its culmination in Jesus and the Mahdi. 
The Universal Tree and the Four Birds Al Al a poetic book on the complete human and the four principles of existence Prayer for Spiritual Elevation and Protection Al -dar -al -ala, a short prayer which is still widely used in the Muslim world the Interpreter of Desires Tarjaman al -Ashwak, a collection of nasibs which, in response to critics, Ibn Arabi republished with a commentary explaining the meaning of the poetic symbols. Divine Governance of the Human Kingdom at Tadbidrat al-Alahiya fi Isla al-Mamlakat al insaniya The Four Pillars of Spiritual Transformation Hilyat al -Abdul, a short work on the essentials of the spiritual path the Futuhat al makiya In 629 AH the first draft of al Futuhat al makiya was completed. Hundreds of manuscripts of this work exist in various libraries of the world, the most important of them being the manuscript of Konya, written by its author. Three years later in 632 AH, on 1 Muharram, Ibn Arabi embarked on a second draft of the Futuhat, this he explained, included a number of additions and a number of deletions as compared with the previous draft. This revision completed in the year 636 After completion of this second draft, he started teaching it to his disciples. Dr. Osman Yahya has mentioned hundreds of these hearings or public readings that occur between the year 633 AH and 638 AH. <inaudible> Urdu translation of al Futuhat al Makiya The first successful attempt at translating al Futuhat al Makiya was made by Muhammad Fazl Khan Changwi, who started publishing his translation in 1913 in installments of 100 pages each, which had to be stopped in 1927 due to lack of funds. By then, 18 parts, which comprise 30 chapters, had been published. The second impression of this translation is available. The second volume of this translation was published in 2013 under the title, Futuhat i Makiya, Part 2. From Para 18 to Para 27, Bab 30 to Bab 63. <laughs> <laughs> Commentaries and translations of Fusus al Hikam There have been many commentaries on Ibn Arabi's Fusus al Hikam. The first, al Fuqiq, was written by his stepson and heir, Sadr al Din al Kanawi, who had studied the book with Ibn Arabi, the second by Kanawi's student, Mu'ayyad al Din al Jandi, which was the first line by line commentary, the third by Jandi's student, Dawud al Qaisari, which became very influential in the Persian speaking world. There were many others, in the Ottoman world e.g., Abdullah al-Basnawi, the Arab world e.g., Abd al-Ghani al-Nabulusi and the Persian world e.g., Haydar Amoli. It is estimated that there are over 50 commentaries on the Fusus, most of which only exist in manuscript form. The more famous such as Kanawi's Fukuk, have been printed in recent years in Iran. A recent English translation of Ibn Arabi's own summary of the Fusus, Nax al Fusus, the imprint or pattern of the Fusus, as well a commentary on this work by Abd al Rahman Jami, Naqd al Nusus fi Shar Nax al Fusus, 1459, by William Chittick, was published in Volume 1 of the Journal of the Mahidin Ibn Arabi Society, 1982. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Critical editions. The Fusus was first critically edited in Arabic by Afifi 1946. The first English translation was done in partial form by Angela Colm Seymour from the French translation of Titus Burkhardt as Wisdom of the Prophets 1975, and the first full translation was by Ralph Austin as Bezels of Wisdom 1980. There is also a complete French translation by Charles André Gillis, entitled Le Livre des Chatons des Sagesses 1997. The only major commentary to have been translated into English so far is entitled Ismail Haki Bersevi's translation and commentary on Fusus al Hikam by Mahidin ibn Arabi, translated from Ottoman Turkish by Bulent Rauf in four volumes. 1985 <laughs> Urdu translations In Urdu, the most widespread and authentic translation was made by Shams ul Mufassirin Bar ul Uloom Hazrat Muhammad Abdul Qadir Siddiqui Qadri Hazrat, the former dean and professor of theology of the Asmania University, Hyderabad. 
It is due to this reason that his translation is in the curriculum of Punjab University. Malvi Abdul Qadir Siddiqui has made an interpretive translation and explained the terms and grammar while clarifying the Sheikh's opinions. A new edition of the translation was published in 2014 with brief annotations throughout the book for the benefit of contemporary Urdu reader. A new critical edition of Fusus al Hikam has been published by Ibn al Arabi Foundation in 2015. This edition is based on the beautiful manuscript written by Sheikh Sadr al Din al Kanawi and verified by Sheikh al Akbar ibn al Arabi himself. Along with this, the editor also consluted six of the most ancient and historic manuscripts of Fusus available today. This new edition also contains one of the best available translation of Fusus al Hikam in Urdu, by Abrar Ahmed Shahi, who has consulted more than seven commentaries and several other previous translations in order to translate the ideas correctly. He has also translated and published more than 25 works of Ibn al Arabi. See also Mujadid Akbariya Ivan Aguali Mahmud Shabastari Miguel Asin Palacios References Sources As of this edit, this article uses content from A Concise Biography of Ibn Arabi which is licensed in a way that permits reuse under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharia-like 3.0 unported license, but not under the GFDL. All relevant terms must be followed. Topic. Citations Topic. Bibliography Chopra, R. M. Sufism Origin, Growth, Eclipse, Resurgence, 2016, Anuradha Prakashan, New Delhi. ISBN 978-93-85083-52-5 Books by Ibn Arabi This is a small selection of his many books. In Arabic Ibn Arabi Al Futuhat al Makiya, Vols. 1 4. Beirut, N. P. Photographic reprint of the old edition of Bulak 1329 1911, which comprises four volumes each about 700 pages of 35 lines. The page size is 20 by 27 cm. Print. Ibn Arabi, Ibrahim Madkar, and Uthman Yahya. Al Futuhat al Makiya, Vols. 1 14, Al Kahira, Al Hay a al Misriya al Ama lil Katab, 1972. Print This is the critical edition by Osman Yahya. This version was not completed, and the 14 volumes correspond to only Volume 1 of the standard Bulak, Beirut edition. Ibn Arabi, Fusus al Hikam. Beirut, Dar al Katab al Arabi. Print Ibn Arabi. Shah Rizalit Ra al Quds fi Muhasabit al Nafs. Comp. Mahmud Gurub, 2nd ed. Damascus, Nadar, 1994. Print. Ibn Arabi. Insha al Dawair, Beirut, Dar al Qutub al Ilmiya, 2004. Print. Ibn Arabi. Rasil ibn Arabi Ijaz Ali Malik al Muzaffar. Beirut, Dar al Qutub al Ilmiya, 2001. Print. Ibn Arabi. Rasail ibn al Arabi Kitab al Jalala. Hybridad Deccan, Darat al Ma'arif al Uthmaniya, 1948. Print. Ibn Arabi. Kitab al Ba. Cairo, Maktabat al Kahira, 1954. Print. Ibn Arabi, Rizalat ila Imam al Razi. Hybridad Deccan, Darat al Ma'arif al Uthmaniya, 1948. Print. Topic. In English Ibn, Arabi 1997. Divine Governance of the Human Kingdom. Translated by Tosin Bayrak. Fons Vitae. ISBN 9781887752789. Ibn, Arabi 1992. What the Seeker Needs, Essays on Spiritual Practice, Oneness, Majesty and Beauty, with Ibn Arabi's glossary of 199 Sufi technical terms. 
Translated by Tosin Byrak. University of Virginia, Threshold Books. ISBN 9780939660000. Ibn Arabi. Nasab al Kirka. Trans. Gerald Elmore. Volume 26. Oxford, Journal of the Mahidin Ibn Arabi Society, 1999. Print. Ibn Arabi. Divine Sayings The Mishkat al Anwar of Ibn Arabi. Oxford, ANQA, 2005. Print. Ibn Arabi. The Meccan Revelations. PIR Press, 2010 Topic Books about Ibn Arabi Adas, Claude, Quest for the Red Sulphur, Islamic Texts Society, Cambridge, 1993. ISBN 0-946621-45-4 Akak, Samer, Ibn Arabi's Cosmogony and the Sufi Concept of Time, in, Constructions of Time in the Late Middle Ages, ed. Carol Poster and Richard Utz. Evanston, Ill, Northwestern University Press, 1997. pp. 115-42. Titus Burkhart and Bulent Rauf Translator, Mystical Astrology According to Ibn Arabi The Fons Vitae Titus Burkhart Series ISBN 1-887752-43-9 Henry Corbin, Alone with the Alone, Creative Imagination in the Sufism of Ibn Arabi, Bollingen, Princeton 1969, reissued in 1997 with a new preface by Harold Bloom, Elmore, Gerald T. Ibn al-Arabi's Testament on the Mantle of Initiation, al kirka Journal of the Mahidin Ibn Arabi Society 26 1999, 1-33. Print. Elmore, Gerald T. Islamic Sainthood in the Fullness of Time, Ibn al-Arabi's Book of the Fabulous Griffin. Leiden, Brill, 1999. Print. Hurton Stein, Stephen 1999. The Unlimited Mercifier, The Spiritual Life and Thought of Ibn Arabi. ANQA Publishing and White Cloud Press. ISBN 0953451321. Hurton Stein, Stephen, and Jane Clark. Ibn Arabi Digital Archive Project Report for 2009 Mahidin Ibn Arabi 1165 AD to 1240 AD and the Ibn Arabi Society. December 2009. Web, 20 August 2010. Nish, Alexander. Ibn Arabi in the Later Islamic Tradition, The Making of a Polemical Image in Medieval Islam. Albany, New York, Sunni Press, 1999. Torbjorn Saifov, VAR Int Rad Do Not Be Afraid, ISBN 91-7221-112-1 Yahya, Osman. Mu'alafid ibn Arabi, Tariqua wa Tazrifua. Cairo, Dar al-Sabuni, 1992. Print. Yusuf, Muhammad Hajj. Ibn Arabi, Time and Cosmology, London, Routledge, 2007 Culture and Civilization in the Middle East. Yusuf, Muhammad Hajj. Shams al Maghrib. Aleppo, Dar al Fusilat, 2006. Print. Topic external links Download books Chittak, William. Ibn Arabi. In Zalta, Edward N. Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Science Sacre Ibn Arabi Society page about Ibn al Arabi home page of Ibn al Arabi Foundation in Pakistan Fusus al Hikam The Seals of Wisdom Fswiz al Kam Fusus al Hikam The Pearls of Wisdom Ch 1 to 5 Translated by Dr Mukhtar Hussain Ali Ibn Arabi and Mystical Journey The Journey to the Lord of Power John G Sullivan Department of Philosophy Elon College Le Concept de Morche Ibn Arabi